Welcome to Comic Book Debate. We're the Faruqi brothers, Shiraz, Zian, Umar, and Samir. And today we're joined by a very special guest, CEO and co-founder of the social network Vero, Amen Hariri. Amen, how are you? Great. Awesome. So, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, Amen, you know, leading Vero, I know a lot of us, uh, since you guys are following us, you're probably big fans of the Snyder Cut movement. You're probably already on Vero. And in that case, you know uh, the kind of social platform we're dealing with. It's something unique. It's something different. Uh, it's something that's really changing the game of how uh, uh, things have been going in this social networking world that we live in. There's so much stuff going on, but Vero has this kind of simplicity and almost like intuitiveness that makes it so enjoyable to use. So we're very excited to have Amon on. We're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff. We're going to be covering Vero, of course. We're going to be talking about uh, DC Comics. We're going to be talking about the Snyder Cut. We're going to be talking about Zack Snyder. So there's a lot of stuff. You guys are going to be very excited to hear it. So let's get right into it. Samir, why don't you kick us off? Well, launching a new social media platform must be incredibly difficult in today's market. Can you tell us a little bit about the origin story for Vero? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it really started with a, a conversation between me and the and the other co-founders, my my best friend, and uh, well, they're both two of my best friends. One happens to be my cousin, um, uh, and uh, it, it was really centered around, you know, just how we felt um, existing social networks, you know, made us feel, and, and how we were interacting with our friends. I got on late on uh, on on social on online social. Um, it was uh, kind of purposeful. I felt like I'd be putting myself out there too much. And when I did finally get on, it, um, it really felt like it was the intention of the, of the apps and, uh, and the platforms were, you know, sort of more being put more as a priority than um, the experiences. And so the result of that, when I saw how my friends were using it, how the people that I ended up connecting um, had used it for quite some time before me, I could see a different behavior online than I, than I would see in the real world. And I found that fascinating and, um, and really brought it down to how these platforms have been engineered to, to make people perform um, rather than just be themselves. Uh, and then, you know, on the other side, uh, you know, more it, it was more about showing off than sharing. So we wanted to create a platform that really brought it back down to basics. Um, not put any, any ingredients in, into it that made you feel like you had to perform at all. We've seen people go from or come from other social platforms and they start to behave on Vero like they were behaving everywhere else, but then they start to behave um, sort of normally and be themselves. And, um, and I think that that that's the most gratifying part about all of this is that the people that are on Vero that we interact with every day are very real. They're, they're genuine. Um, you know, they, they behave as themselves and as you know, and the, and the challenge um, that, that we face as a new social platform, um, you know, sort of gets put in the, our feeling that, that it's a challenge gets put in the, in the background because we feel like we're doing some good in the world. We're actually putting something out there that people want and, um, and is good for them. Yeah, definitely. And um, you, know, you alluded to this a little bit, um, how the mission statement for Vero is actually you know, starkly different from, let's say, a Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And um, you know, what makes Vero such a content creator-friendly platform? Well, I think, you know, it's, it really... It's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, the way we behave as as an organization, as people, uh, has a lot to do with the friendly environment that we've created for um, for artists and and um, and and the creative uh, the creative market. Uh, we have a huge amount of respect for the creative process. I mean, we're you know when we're building something as um, as complex, as big as a, as a social platform, uh, as, as you can see, there is a, a, a creative, there, there is creativity at every level of the, of the organization. Uh, being an engineer, you know, one doesn't, well, one doesn't say, well, if you're an engineer, you're creative. Well, actually you need a lot of creativity if you're making something. You can't, even, even on the engineering side, to come up with solutions 
it isn't just ones and zeros. It, it isn't just something you download off the web. You have to figure out how somebody's going to use something and then, um, you know, find it, find all of the, the ways that it, things could go badly. And so, you know, there's, there's so many, there's so many elements of creativity there. So, uh, you know, from the engineering side, all the way to, you know, our partnership side, we're very much in touch with the creative process and what it takes. And, you know, funny story, like before we released Vero into the world initially, um, you know, that, that was really that, that moment of saying, okay, we're, we're actually putting something of ourselves out there. And, and we're, we very much know that music artists, filmmakers, anybody who's in the creative space, when they're putting something out there, um, you know, as a, as a creative um, uh, product of theirs, you know, whatever it is, they're putting a, a piece of themselves out there. And so as an organization, as, as a team, different members of the team, we all understand that. And so when we're, when we're, dealing with creators, when we're putting a feature into the app that shows um, somebody's work, we're thinking about that. We, we build that element into our, uh, into our process, whether we're dealing with another a human being or we're just thinking about, well, what would artists want? And so, you know, you see nothing gets cropped, whether it's a, a movie poster, a, a, an album cover, a photo, a video. We're always thinking about how the highest quality experience looks like and and i think that's resonated whether we have an interaction with somebody or not they see it as part of the app and, and it's a stark difference from everything else out there and that's well said and you know it, a lot of what you said kind of reminds uh me of how we you know approach comic book debate even though it's a very kind of separate thing but uh looking at things from uh you know putting yourself out there and what that means and the kind of responsibility that comes with that because uh everything you say now has a digital footprint. Everything you say uh, will come back 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 years later. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is what you did. This is who you were. So every step you take, especially publicly, is so important. And that's why when the four of us are doing stuff with Comic Book Debate, even though it's just for superheroes and stuff like that, we want to make sure that we're approaching it in a way that uh, kind of dignifies who we are, but also kind of what we represent, whether it be our faith, whether it be our culture, whatever the case might be. We want to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward at all times. I think that's a big thing about Vera. You feel like from the top to the bottom, whoever's being, whoever's on the Vera team is putting uh, everything uh, of themselves in it to make sure it's like the best experience and it comes through for the users. So I really appreciate that. And speaking on comic book debate, I'm sure uh, we can transition to superheroes, which our audience loves. So Umar, what you got for us? So being a huge fan of uh, superheroes and comic books, uh, those who know you know this, um, my question is basically, where, did that, where does that love stem from? And uh, is there any specific movies and TV shows or actual or comic books that kind of introduce you to the, to the world? Well, I, I mean, uh, so I, I grew up in Saudi Arabia uh, at the time and in, in uh, you know, in the 80s, it was, it was a far, far away land. Uh, and, and, you know, the getting comic books was, a, was an impossibility. I mean, we would get... It was very frustrating. We would get one book. <laughs> You'd go through it and be like, "Oh my God, you know what happens next?" And the the chances of you getting the next, uh, you know, the the next chapter was going to be uh, extremely uh, unlikely. I mean, the the most we in in terms of consumption was, you know, TV shows, uh, the equivalent of of Saturday morning TV shows. In our case, it was Thursday morning because Thursday. And Friday was our weekend, so um, you know we very much introduced through through the the world of of you know VHS and 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 watching things that way or through TV. Uh, and like everybody else, I think you know we were enamored by these uh, by these characters, um, by these creations, uh, the, just in terms of what they can do, the powers. You know, you you. It, it, your imagination runs wild, you know, being able to fly or being able to do any of these things, these superhuman uh, powers, is just, you know, it just captures the, the imagination of any kid. I, I know my, my kids, um, you know, are, are very much into superheroes for the, for the same reason. But I think for the few of us, or not, not few anymore, but um, 
you know, for, for those of us who still, um, it, it means something to us as we grow older is because we see beyond the, you know, the superpowers, but the decisions, the, you know, the, the, the self-sacrifice, the willingness to do good. I mean, you think about it, <laughs> these superheroes, you know, they, they could just own <laughs> anything and everything around them, right? But what did they choose to do? They choose to help people. They choose, you know, to not have a, a real life uh, that they can really enjoy because most of the time they're helping everybody else. And, and I, I love that idea. Um, I love that idea that, you know, for those who have um, any kind of, of ability to help others in, in this world, uh, that that's the path that they choose. And, um, you know, and I grew up with a, a dad, uh, God rest his soul, that really, um, you know, he, he strove to be successful as a businessman, but his, in, in his entire time, he could not rest purely on the idea that he was successful financially, that he had to do things for others. I mean, this is a, this is a man who put, um, you know, 30,000 kids through college and changed the generation, like didn't allow a generation to be lost to a, to a civil war. Um, and so that, that, that's the environment that, that I grew up in. And, um, and, you know, just to, I mean, I can give you, uh, I've got a, I've got a drawing here. This is, a, this is something that was put together by, that was, that was made by an artist that, you know, does the, the drawings in the papers, you know, that you see. Yeah. Sorry, I put a lot of. That's awesome. uh, no, I can see it. We can see it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's basically my dad as uh, Superman. And uh, it says uh, over here, it says Super Hariri. And, uh, and it's him carrying um, universities, schools, hospitals above the rubble of, of uh, you know, a, a war, worn, war-torn country. And uh, this was hanging on my wall. You know, and um, so superheroes always play, has play, have played a part in my life uh, in one form or fashion. And I was lucky to be the son of, a, you know, what's considered a hero in, in, uh, in this part of the world. That's awesome and definitely super inspiring story. I think our audience definitely get a lot from that. I mean, everyone can kind of be a hero in their own way, no matter what few resources you have. Whether you have a lot or you're little, you can make changes either in your own families, your own communities. Uh, whatever the case might be. So that's very inspiring and very awesome. And we definitely agree as lifelong superhero fans ourselves that, you know, there's so much you can get out of it. And what you get out of it as a kid is different than what you get out of it as an adult. And uh, even though your tastes and sensibilities change, uh, you, you still gravitate to the same heroes, but just for different reasons. I find that very interesting about them. But, you know, let's, let's move on to talk about uh, your collection. I mean, your collection of comic books are famously known. Like you have some of the best stuff that any fan's wildest dreams would be owning Action Comics, uh, Detective Comics 27, all like the number ones of each hero. Tell me how that all came about. And like, when did you start thinking, you know what, let me start collecting these? Yeah, look, I've, like I said, I've, I've, um, I've grown up loving these characters and I, I, I just felt the, I, I started actually uh, collecting statues. Um, as you can see behind me, I mean, it, the camera, this angle doesn't do it justice. I've got quite a few around me here, but um yeah, it really started there. I mean, I, I like a lot of us, uh, when eBay started, I was scouring eBay looking for a cool uh, statue here and there. And then, you know, I thought to myself, actually, wouldn't it be cool just to own, like, just, just a few of the, the original comic books? Um, and, and I started doing my research there, and I, I came across Metropolis Comics in, in New York and just gave them a call and just started talking to them, and they just you know, they really gave me an education. I was, I was really fortunate to have come across um, uh, Stephen and Vincent uh, there who, you know, are just, you know, the, the most honest people, uh, you know, that I know, period. Um, and, and just are really, they're really in it uh, for the passion. And, um, and I just started, you know, getting really interested in the idea of, of owning, owning some books and, and, just one thing led to another. I didn't set out to own that many books. It, it wasn't, that wasn't the idea. I just wanted to have a piece of history. And, um, 
And, and I love the idea, just just in, in terms of the design uh, aspect of it, like when you think about it, when you're designing something, whether it's a, a phone or, you know, a device or a piece of software or, a, you know, a building or anything, if it can, if it can stand the test of time, uh, that's a great design, right? And, and you think about these these characters that were created by people and that haven't changed, not really. You know, very few of them have, if any, if at all, right? I mean, you look at Superman, you look at Batman, you look at, at Wonder Woman, you look at Supergirl, Green Lantern, the, these ideas, these stories that were written back then still resonate with us today. And so where they come from is extremely, like, it's just awesome, like that, that part of human storytelling, right? And then even the designs of their costumes haven't changed that much. I mean, obviously there are, let's call them modern interpretations of, um, and you know, there's the stuff around underwear on the outside and, and on the inside, that kind, of, that kind of stuff. But I mean, everything else it remains pretty much the same. And so this is a, you know, you're talking about things that have lasted decades. And I just, I find that amazing, amazing. Um, and so it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a human truth. You know, I always say like, okay, so math, I believe math is discovered. It's not, you know, it's not invented. It's discovered, right? It's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a truth that's out there ready to be plucked, ready to be discovered. Music is the same to me uh, since it's got rules. So music is, is pretty much a, it's a truth that's just waiting to be discovered. And so these stories are a kind of truth. If we all love them and we all, and we are enjoying them more and more and more and we can't get enough of them, um, I feel like it's a human truth. And so, you know, the, the, the comic book collection that I have, it really, I didn't set out to do that. I didn't set out to own that many comic books or anything like that. It was, it was purely coming from just wanting to own a piece of history. And I'm, I'm in a very fortunate position to have both have the means, but also I, I, the means is not enough. Trust me. You could say you wanted to build a collection and, you know, you spend the rest of your life trying to do it. But I was lucky enough that, that these books came my way and, um, and I just love them so much and, and appreciate them that I, I you know, um, decided to own them. And, and it was, uh, it, it's really been fantastic. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, the way I look at it is, is something that I'd like to leave for my kids. Um, you know, both as, as something that is meaningful to me and, and a great investment. So. Well said, well said. And, you know, speaking of, you know, superheroes and collections, you also had a chance to kind of meet different content creators, different people in the business. So why don't you shift us gears and take us there? So uh, what is, what's your relationship like with uh, Zack Snyder? How did it start and uh, how did it evolve? We know you had a small cameo in, um, in Batman v Superman. Um, I would ask if you have a cameo in Justice League, but <laughs> you did, it got cut. And if you did it, they could probably put it in now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't have a cameo in, in, uh, in Justice League. But um, in, in terms of, yeah, my, so Zach is a, a very close friend. I'm, I'm very proud to say that. Um, he's one of the, you know, the, the way I describe Zach is he's effortlessly cool. Like everything that the guy does is just, just amazing. And, um, and, and it always comes from a good place. He's got a, a, a really big heart, uh, and he, he applies, uh, that honesty to everything that he does, whether it's friendships and, and certainly in the creative, uh, in the creative uh, world that, that he lives in. Um, I, 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 one day, so I, I've been a part of a lot of uh, charity auctions uh, in, in, in the past. And uh, uh, I happened to be on a site that where there was this auction to get on to the movie, like have a, have a part. I had to read it probably six or seven times to believe what I was seeing. Um, and, uh, and I won the auction and I, I, I really love any relationship that's, that has started in my life. And I've started a lot of great relationships with the 
fantastic people through charity auctions. And it's a wonderful way to start a relationship is actually on the basis, you know, on doing, doing some good in the world, you know? And, um, and I happened to win that auction to win that auction and, uh, and, and yeah, I got to be on, on the, on the set, but what happened was like, and I don't know, I don't know why just, you just don't know what you're going to expect when you meet people. Right. I mean, for the first time you hear about them, you know what they've done, but meeting them in person, you don't really know what makes them tick. And I don't do the thing where I go online and I start reading every single thing that I could possibly, because, because that's not that I don't, I don't believe in that. You know, I, I don't want people doing that about me and I wouldn't do that about anybody. I heard great things about Zach uh, through people that he knows and that we, we mutually know, but very, very little. But when I, I came on onto the set, I actually uh, had my, my books with me. Like I just figured, you know, you know, I'm going to, Batman versus Superman, I should bring some books, you know, just, just as a whatever. And, uh, and then the level of excitement from everyone, from Zach to, you know, the, the people working on lighting, makeup, everybody was excited. They weren't just working on a movie. They were working on something that they were super excited about. Sorry, I use the word super. Um, you know, it, it, but it was a phenomenal moment for me to, to see that because it showed how genuine their love for what it is that they were making, you know, was uh, and still is. And so, um, you know, the the relationship I have with Zach is, is one of the, you know, is one of the most treasured, you know, um, things that the, you know, the things I, the, one of the things in my life that I treasure the most. Uh, being able to, you know, call Deborah a friend and uh, being able to, you know, meet their kids and, and their kids meet my, my kids and having that relationship is, is, is such a special thing for me. Um, and, uh, and, and I never imagined when I was reading that auction and, and winning, you know, and trying to win that auction, that that would be, you know, the, you know that I would, I would receive the greatest gift uh, that I could possibly, you know, ask for. Um, yes, I've been a part of a movie that I cared about, that I care about, you know, being a part of, and and that means a lot to me. But the relationship that I ended up, you know, having at the, at coming out of that movie, uh, you know, including with Clay, that would, that's where I met Clay for the first time. And then eventually I met his wife Christine, um, and and just uh, you know, so many amazing people. Uh, that, that to me is, you know. It's such a special thing for me. Well said. And, you know, uh, speaking of Clay as well, Clay is someone we consider a friend. We had dinner with him a couple of times. I uh, met Christine as well. So we definitely speak on your character. And same with Zach. You know, we never had a one-on-one -on -one with Zach. But anytime Zach had a chance to support us, he was doing it. He was saying, you know, either he would say, you guys are the best. Or he would say little kind of, just little encouragements over the years. Oh, you guys are the dream team. And saying that keeps us going. We're like, yo, if Zach Snyder is saying that. Let's just, let's just, you know, keep, let's keep doing this 110%. So we get to like, he helps even people he doesn't know. He's always willing to extend a hand and uh, help out and even come on a few of our projects. So we definitely see what you're saying there. Yeah. And, and he, he really does that for, for things he believes in guys. I mean, you know, um, I, I don't know him to ever feel that he needs to do something that he, he just doesn't believe in. And uh, so, you know, what you guys are building is great, and uh, and if he's encouraging you, it's a it's a great song. Uh, so obviously, the movement ended up kind of growing and finding a home on Vera, which I thought was very fascinating. And it's not just because Zach was there; it's like the way people, um, the fandom, came together on this platform. And even now, like at least on our timelines, you know, people who are in the movement, you're scrolling, and there's so much positivity for not just Zach, but for the movement, for his movies, and obviously. Uh, it would be stupid to say that the Snyder Cut, uh, that Vero didn't have a hand in that because the fact that everyone came together on this platform, it made, it made such a big difference when it came to organizing, when it came to campaigning, when it came to bringing it all together. So what's your take on all that? Because I'm sure when he created Vero, uh, that wasn't 100% going to be like, oh, this is going to happen. So when you started seeing this community build, what was your kind of live reaction? When, uh, yeah, so when... 
when people discovered that Zach was actually using Vero and, um, and posting behind the scenes images, that was the first hint of, of things to come. And, uh, and I always, I always tell people, you know, who say, who ask me, how do you want to help? How, how can we help grow Vero? I tell them, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's just use it, use it and make people understand that this is uh, a home for you online. Um, as Zach has done, uh, because it's, it's not so much the content. People talk about the con the content, probably about 20% of the time, 80% of the time they talk about his behavior, that he's on there, that he's actually there answering or, uh, commenting or, or putting things, you know, um, you know, talk about how he feels or, or about something or, or, you know, things related to charities that he's involved in. And so, um, certainly the fact that the, that the comic book community have chosen Vero as a, as a home for themselves to me is, I mean, it's a great honor. I, 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 I can't ask for more. Like, you know, at the end of the day, when people trust you with some, we're sitting here as designers and engineers putting together software from a place, whatever, we're spread around the world, but it's from a place that we behind a, behind a wall, let's say, and we're putting that out there into the world and people are using that and trusting us. That's a huge honor. And I, I think if we lose sight of that, we get lost. And I, I think that that's something that, um, you know, that, that it, it's part of what anybody who's making anything and putting it out into the world should always remember that at the end of the day, people who are choosing to use your product. And if you treat them with respect, then you're, you're at the level of, you know, uh, uh, of the responsibility of, of, of that, of that honor really. Um, so for us, all of us, the fact that the Snyder cut, the, the fact that Vero had any part to play in the Snyder cut actually happening is, I mean, it's beyond words for us. You know, I mean, it, it, unfortunately, because of uh, coronavirus, we can't see each other, but we'd be high-fiving each other every, every two seconds on this. Uh, but it was, it was an incredible moment when, when uh, Zach announced it. And, um, and we were just utterly, I, I mean, inside, we were just exploding all the time. Like, it just, we knew about it and we were helping, you know, to create the, the event and, and, and things like that. But, we, you know, we were, we were so excited. We, we didn't sleep for a week. I mean, we were, we couldn't tell anybody else. <laughs> we knew, a few of us knew about it and it was just, uh, it, it's a moment we'll never forget. And, uh, and I, I want to thank, you know, anybody and everybody who's, who's, chosen Barrow as a home for themselves to, you know, whether it's to follow Zach or to interact with each other and share their passion, you know, it, it's, it's really a big thank you to them because we're only as good as the users that we have and the users that we have are amazing people. So, uh, so speaking of products and respecting products <laughs> or not respecting products, um, did you actually get a chance to see, uh, the theatrical cut of Justice that was actually released to the public. Is that something that you watched or? or did I watch the theatrical release? Yeah, I did. But here's the thing, I saw it once. I've never seen a single like most people, yeah. movie, only one. Usually, while I'm watching a superhero movie, I can't wait to see it again. You know, I remember it, it, this is this is bar none. Like it, this, not a single movie. This one, I couldn't. I could. I, I barely could get, get through watching it the first time. It was. A, it was. It was. Yeah. There. There are just things in it that I just. I didn't. Didn't connect. You know. And uh, my kids were excited to see it, and I. I. We couldn't not see it. So you know, we did end up seeing it in the theaters. Um, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it since. I can't. I can barely remember any any parts of it. So I'm looking forward to the to the Snyder Cut. Yeah, 
same. Zion, you want to you want to take that last one? All right, sure. Um, so I guess jumping back to um, Vero, um, can you tell us a bit about what a little bit about what's next for Vero? Are there any um, big changes or new features going to be added? Yeah, I, without talking in too much detail because um, everything that we do seems to be copied by uh, by others. Um, but um, no, there's a lot coming. Uh, you know, we're we're a small team, uh, but we're a mighty team. It's uh, uh, I've seen I've seen the just all the members of the of the Vero team. You know, are putting their hearts and souls into into what's coming next. Um, we're always going to, you know, we're always going to be looking at, at putting, at making updates. Uh, we have a fairly big one uh, that we're working on. But, you know, but be assured that what we're always trying to do is make sure that we're not falling into the trap that has led us to where we are today in, in, in social media. I mean, if you think about it, you know, when's the last time anybody said anything good about social media? You ask most people, what do they think about social media? And they'll say, you know, it's, I don't know. It's not great. You know, they did, there's not a nice feeling about it these days. And I think it's because it's turned into social media when originally it was, it was social networking and, um, and that's, that's what attracted people to it. And what we're, what we're striving to do is whatever feature we're working on, whatever design, whatever thing we're putting in, we're trying to make sure that it's, it, it doesn't turn bad for you. You know, and it's, it's kind of like making a, you know, I, I keep thinking about it kind of like food. You know, back in the day, we, I think we ate anything. I remember eating anything when I was a kid, not knowing, you know, uh, whether it was good for us or bad for us. Um, and, and we should be thinking the same way about the software that we have on our phones because it's, it's living with us pretty much 24 seven, certainly every waking moment. Right. Um, and so we're, we're working on an update, but you know, hopefully it'll be as, as good of a, as much of a, a message, uh, you know, to the world, to the market about what we're about and what we stand for. So, um, you know, for, for the loyal, uh, Vero users, you know, I, I want to thank them for all the feedback that we've gotten and, uh, really the, just their willingness to help us build this thing. Cause we always said from the get go, uh, this isn't something we can do by ourselves. We need help. And, uh, the most satisfying help we've gotten is the, the help of our users. Well said, well said. Uh, and definitely, guys, if you want to check out Vero, uh, we'll have a link in the description. We definitely want you to download the app. We want you to uh, join in if you haven't already. I know a lot of our uh, subscribers have downloaded it already, but if you haven't, it's something we all definitely encourage you to do. And you can find, uh, uh, amen, you can find all of us. You can find the Faruqi brothers uh, by our name. And we're doing some exclusive stuff just for Vero, putting special stuff there as well. But inside, look at how we do things, our process. And of course, uh, Amen, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, actually, a fun story that I want to end this on was that back in 2017, right? So I just graduated uh, college with my bachelor's degree and I was in finance. So I was working uh, as a financial advisor on Wall Street. So I thought, okay, this is where my career is going to go. You know, I'm a brown family. That's makes sense, right? Everything, you know, there's certain only few roles you can, you know, go into a doctor, engineer, you know. <laughs> uh, but, but, um, so I wasn't enjoying it and I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. And right away I was like, this is not something I want to do. So, uh, I, I DM that for some reason we were both connected, uh, amen and myself. So I DM him. I said, hey, listen, uh, give me some advice because I'm not really feeling, uh, this financial thing, but I'm thinking I want to jump into a little bit of journalism. I don't do something different. And I remember exactly, you told me kind of like we had, we had a phone call, a short phone call thereafter. And you explained to me that. If you're something you're passionate about, then just jump right into it and uh, put your 100% into that. And then literally a month after that, I got my brother's night together. I said, let's just start something. Let's start something different. Uh, 
let's jump in this comic book news media because kind of like how social media has not many good things to say about it. There's not much good to say about superhero news media in general because it's very clickbaity. A lot of it's done hate click wise and that's probably across the board. But in our little sphere, we were noticing it a lot. So I said, let's try to do that, but do it differently. And then we launched comic book debate, which was definitely kind of less on the news, more on the analysis, less about uh, what top 10 things you hate, but top 10 things you love instead. And we really wanted to focus that uh, as our mission statement. And then within two and a half years, we're at the point today in 2020, where it's like, uh, we have three, four charity events on our belt. We have, uh, you know, a substantial YouTube presence, a podcast presence, a site presence. Uh, we did launch workshops, student workshops uh, with different schools and uh, bringing special comic book uh, classes to these programs. So we looking back, I mean, I just want to say thank you because if you didn't kind of give me that encouragement to jump head first and kind of leave that finance to pursue kind of my passion and then in what ended up becoming our passion as brothers, I don't think we've gotten this far. So definitely thank you for that, man. No, touch wood, man. I mean, you, you guys are doing great. And, and yeah, when, you know, I, I was lucky early on in my life that um, I pursued my passion in, in, in tech. Um, and, and this is similar to you, what you were saying before. Uh, I figured that I had to go to, well, I wanted to go to college, but that going to college meant going to business school and getting a business degree. Like what else did you do? You either did that or, or a doctor or engineer, right? And, and, um, and, and funny enough, like I spent all of my time on computers, like all the time I was on, on a computer at a time when you had to fix everything. You had to figure out how to use it. You could, you had to, you had to, you couldn't just use it. You had to, you had to fix it to use it uh, all the time. And my, uh, I remember my mother, you know, sort of just looking at me strangely, you know, I was uh, at a table fixing something and she said, um, why are you in business school? Why aren't you in computers? You know, just very nonchalantly. And I remember the light bulb going off in my, you know, like, what that's a thing is that possible and so since then I've, I've you know every every day has been more like uh you know when i've been working in tech has been uh more like i'm i'm just doing my hobby you know it's like it's my it, it I, it's it's full of passion every day so you know, I'm glad your life has gone that way as well. And I, I wish that on everybody, you know, just follow your passions as much as you can. Appreciate it. And we want to thank Amen so much for joining the brother, my brothers and I. We definitely said this is a long time coming, but we're happy to finally get you on board. And uh, I'm sure our subscribers will love this conversation. Just a quick reminder that the Faruqi Brothers podcast is part of the Comic Book Debate Network. So if you're looking to support us, please give us a follow at Comic Book Debate at most social media platforms. Give us a follow at our personal names on Vero. Uh, definitely visit our website for uh, the latest news and analysis from a diverse team of writers. And of course, subscribe to us at Comic Book Debate on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify for more Faruqi Brothers content. From myself, from Zayan, from Umar, and from Samir, and of course, our special guest, Amen Hariri. This is Comic Book Debate. We'll see you next time. Peace out.